It took my partner and I three years to reach our first $100,000, but in the last year, our net worth has increased by $100,000 from 400,000 to 500,000. So we can officially say that we are halfway to our goal of $1 million. Here are the lessons that we've learned along the way. Get high value at low prices. Whether you're buying food from the supermarket or investing in a company, getting high value at a low price is always a good idea. Purchasing good quality companies at good prices is pretty much the whole investing philosophy of one of the world's most famous investors, Warren Buffett. I think that this principle applies to purchasing pretty much anything in life, not just good quality companies. Back when I was a little kid around eight years old, I would go window shopping with my dad and there was was this one day that I came across this top that I really liked. I asked my dad if we could buy it and he said no because it's not on sale and my dad hated purchasing things that weren't on sale. But he told me that if it went on sale then he would buy the top for me. But what if the top never goes on sale and what if the shop sells out of the top? Sure enough a couple of weeks later that top actually did end up going on sale and it was 50% off. So I was able to purchase that top and my dad and I were even able to get two tops for the price of one because it was 50% off. So next time you're looking at purchasing something, consider whether you are getting high value at a low price and consider how many hours you would need to work in order to afford that item. Which is the perfect segue to my next point, which is money is your life's energy. Unlike super adorable small kittens that are pampered, we humans have to trade our time for money. Food doesn't just magically appear in our bowls every day. We need to work for it, usually for 38 hours or more per week and sometimes at a job we hate. Let's say your salary is $90,000 per year and you work roughly 38 hours per week. This would give you an hourly rate of roughly $49. But is it really $49? What do you mean, is it really? It is, isn't it? It actually isn't when you consider things like taxes, the costs of getting ready, commuting, any other extras that we need to purchase in order to fulfill our job. With a $90,000 salary, let's say you pay taxes of roughly 19%. And let's say you spend roughly one hour per week getting ready and the cost to get ready for example, new clothes and makeup, if you wear makeup, costs you roughly $10 per week. Then we also need to factor in commuting time. Let's say it takes roughly 1.5 hours per day, which is 7.5 hours per week. And the cost of commuting is $50 per week. And let's say, for example, you work at a desk, which gives you back problems, which means that you do need to pay for getting a massage every two weeks which costs you roughly $30 per week. And after you finish work and get home, you can't really do anything for two hours because you still need time to recover. And that takes roughly 10 hours per week. When we add up all of these extra costs, our real hourly wage is roughly $18.76 which is a lot less than the $50 that we assumed before. Oh, I see, that makes sense. So now that we know that our money is actually our life's energy because we had to use our life in order to trade it for money, how does that make you feel about money? Now I know that money is life energy, I don't wanna waste it anymore. One year ago, I was 24 and earning a decent six-figure income, but I felt stressed and burnt out. And one year later, I'm 25, I'm a full-time content creator with my partner Pablo, and I just feel excited about life. Even though some months we may earn less, honestly, it's just worth it to us because we have a lot more freedom in our life. And that freedom is worth a lot more to us than money. And a tool that I'm using to ensure that I am spending my money wisely is called We Money, which is a free app that can help us track our expenses. So if you would like to check it out for yourself, I do have a link below. Zig when others zag. When I was 18, I got into law school so I could hopefully one day fulfill my Asian father's dreams 
of me becoming a lawyer. Queenie's gonna become a lawyer, so now I can brag to all of my brothers and sisters about it. But I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I did, and that's when I started to think about leaving university. But everybody told me if I dropped out of university, I would be making a huge mistake, and I saw around me that everyone was fulfilling that path of going to school, then going to uni, and then pursuing that career, getting a job in that field, and that was pretty much it. That was the formula that I needed to follow. But I decided that it wasn't really the path that I wanted to take, so that's when I decided to drop out of university after one and a half years. Queenie wants to drop out of uni, now I can't brag to all my brothers and sisters about it. I'm not saying that you need to drop out of university, I'm just saying that it's important to explore all opportunities and to find out which one's right for us, instead of just following the crowd and just assuming that the crowd has done its research and assuming that the crowd has made the right decision, instead of really discovering if this is the right decision that we wanna make for ourselves. Because the people in the crowd are humans too, and humans make mistakes. And most likely the people in the crowd are sometimes following the crowd too because they assume that the people in the crowd have also made the right decision. Sometimes we think that the most popular option is the best option, but that's not always the case. And that's why I think it's important for us to do our own research and to make our own decisions. And an opportunity to zig when others zag is to give this video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel because only 10% of people who watch these videos actually give these videos a like. Take calculated risks. Most people don't end up winning because they're afraid of losing even when they actually have a better chance of winning. This is called loss aversion. Let's say I challenge you to a game of heads or tails. If it lands on heads, I give you $150. But if it lands on tails, then you give me $100. What would you say? Would you play heads or tails with me? I asked on Instagram and 42% of people said that they wouldn't play heads or tails with me. Even though with every toss of the coin, they would actually have an expected value of $25. What do you mean by an expected value of $25? So let's break that down. Let's say we play this game of heads or tails 2,000 times. 1,000 times you win and I give you $150. And the other 1,000 times I win and you give me $100. This means when you average it out, you would earn roughly $25 for each throw. Obviously you win some, and you also lose some, but it does average out at around $25 for each throw. So when we're about to make a big decision, I think it's important to ask ourselves, what's the worst thing that could happen? And what's the best thing that could happen? And generally the worst thing that we think could happen isn't actually as bad as we thought it would be. I asked myself this last year when I was thinking about whether or not I should leave my job in order to become a content creator full time. So I asked myself, what's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could have happened is it didn't work out for me and I would have to find a new job. But what's the best thing that could have happened? The best thing that could have happened is I was able to keep on creating content, pursuing my passion and doing the things that I really want to do in life. And for me, it was worth it to take that risk of potentially failing to be able to become a full-time content creator. And I'm honestly happy that I made that decision because now I'm able to be my own boss and work on my own schedule. And I'm also able to travel the world while I'm working, which is one of the benefits of being a full-time content creator. And my partner, Pavel and I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without your support. So thank you so much for following along our journey and for supporting us. Those who keep learning will keep on rising in life. Do you remember a company called Kodak? Hmm, that name does ring a bell. It was that company that made those disposable cameras with the film inside, so you needed to get that film developed in order to get your photos printed. Back then, Kodak was one of the biggest camera companies in the world, and digital cameras were only just starting to find its feet. But the technology with digital cameras just wasn't there yet. Kodak could have invested in creating its own digital camera, but it just didn't really work for its business model because they didn't want to lose that chunk of revenue selling that film for the disposable cameras. So they continued to sell their disposable cameras with the film. Meanwhile, companies like Sony, Canon, 
Canon and Panasonic kept on developing their digital camera technology and their technology kept on getting better and better until one day Canon, Sony and Panasonic were some of the biggest camera companies in the world and Kodak was so far behind it really struggled to catch up with them into the digital world of digital cameras. So what can this teach us about life? The world is evolving rapidly. What the world was like five years ago is so different to what the world is like now. And also what the world is like now will be so different to what the world will be like in five years time. So we can either try to fight the change and try to stop it from happening even though we know it's inevitable. Or we can keep learning and keep evolving and keep progressing into the future. Yes. Bread. Bread. Get that bread. Get that bread. So write us a comment below with the word bread, bread. in it, just so we know who watched this video all the way through. Thank you. See ya. See ya.